news media are full of stories of turbulence, demands for increased liquidity, and tighter regulation. And obviously, these things in a time of financial anxiety are very important. But the thing that sustains individuals and communities, which gives us the courage to go forward into the future together, that is hope. For some, of course, their hopes have been invested in a project which was bound to disappoint. And this is not hindsight, this has been the consistent teaching of the church year after year, that our hope is not ultimately to be invested in a project of growth without limit, with no end in view beyond the process itself. We've received a rude awakening. It's rather like the comment reported of Jonathan Swift, the author of Gulliver's Travels, when the South Sea bubble crashed, he said, all men said that it would come, but no one prepared for it. It came like a thief in the night. Some of the most hopeful people in the world I've ever met are our partners in Mozambique and Angola. When you're very poor, you don't have the luxury of pessimism, which in my experience is the luxury of very wealthy people. But I didn't think we want to indulge in any kind of I told you so comment, because the anxiety in this London of ours is real enough. We are estimating that there might be as many as 100, 150,000 unemployed people. And the diocese has already put itself in a position to help in very practical ways. There are schemes uh, in many parishes uh, of debt counseling, uh, employment projects, and we've circulated details, and they're on the website, of the various examples of good, good practice that there are to be followed. But crucially, as Christmas approaches, it's a time for looking again, expectantly, at the deepest source of our hope. Sometimes the hectic activity, the light generated, can blot out the vast universe, of which we are a small part, and can obscure the stars, the pointers, that are pointing us in a fresh and different direction. And one of the things that city dwellers often suffer from is actually light pollution, which blanks out the night sky. We have a story at Christmas, a story of brightness at midnight. We have a story of wise men being able to see a star, to leave home, to actually leave their old haunts behind and go on a new spiritual search. And what they find is the source of a very surprising hope. It's a baby. It's not a tyrannical god who is planning to reorder the world and to compel obedience. Many people want a Messiah on a white horse. God sent a child in Bethlehem. And that child, Jesus Christ, is not just some symbol of a trite conviction that hope springs eternal in the human breast or nature always renews herself. This is, and it scandalized many people, and many people scoffed at it, but it is God and his word made flesh, implanting hope in the heart of human history. Vulnerable, fragile, depending on the visitors, depending on the shepherds, depending on the wise men, to see and receive this gift of God. But the light has shone in the darkness, and the darkness has never overcome that light. <laughs>